Are you ready to take the Praxis Middle School Math Exam, Test Code 5164? Well, stick with me, and by the end of this video, I'll make sure you're equipped with all the information, testing strategies, and confidence you need to pass this test. Welcome to the Praxis Test Prep channel. I'm Tom, a certified teacher and test prep expert with Study.com. We're proud to partner with ETS, the official provider of the Praxis exams, to bring you the most accurate and up-to-date information straight from the source. By the end of this video, you'll have everything you need to effectively prepare for this exam and take the next step in your teaching career. Ready? Let's jump in. Let's start with the basics. If you're an aspiring teacher, then chances are you need to pass the Praxis Middle School Math exam before working full-time at the middle school level. So what can you expect from the Praxis Middle School Math exam specifically? This exam is designed to assess your math knowledge as well as your ability to teach mathematics effectively. The exam focuses on foundational concepts that middle school math teachers need to cover in their classrooms. It's broken into the following key topic areas, numbers and operations, algebra, functions, geometry and measurement, and statistics and probability. We'll dive into more detail for each of these topics in this video, but just know that this remains consistent from prior years. Praxis Middle School Math Exam gives you 180 minutes to complete 66 questions, so time management is critical. To maximize your score, you need a solid approach to pacing and prioritization. Here's how to do that. Stick to about two and a half minutes per question on average. Use this as a general guide to keep you moving steadily through the exam. If you find an easier question, complete it quickly and bank a little extra time for the more challenging ones. And if you're stuck on a question, don't dwell on it. Mark it for review, skip it, and move on to the next one. This ensures you're answering as many questions as possible within a time limit. When you circle back later, you'll often find the answer comes to you more easily with a fresh perspective. In terms of the questions themselves, you can expect most questions to be standard multiple choice. These questions will ask you to solve a problem or evaluate a teaching approach and then provide four or five answer choices where only one is correct. Remember, this means that you do not always have to know exactly how to solve the problem and can instead use the available answers to narrow down by limiting yourself to the offered options and removing obviously wrong answers. There may be a few questions, however, that follow more unique format. These include multi-select questions where there may be more than one correct answer. These are signaled with select all that apply. These are a bit trickier and you will need to identify all correct answers to get the points for the problem. There will also be a few numeric entry questions where you'll not be given any answer choices and will instead be asked to solve a problem on your own and then type in your answer. Another strategy tip here, read every question carefully, especially with multi-select questions to ensure you don't miss which question format you are dealing with and are able to answer correctly. Now let's talk scoring. The Praxis Middle School Math Exam is scored on a scale of 100 to 200 and a passing score is generally a 157. However, every state has its own score requirements. So always check your state's guidelines on praxis.ets.org. I've linked to the specific page in the description. The ETS keeps their scoring logic confidential, even from us. However, a good rule of thumb is to take your state's passing score, subtract 100, and then treat the resulting number as a percent. That means if your passing score requirement is 157, you can roughly assume that you need to get at least 57% of the questions correct in order to pass. And that brings me to my next strategy tip. There is no penalty for wrong answers on the Praxis, and answering every question gives you the best chances of improving your score. Watch the timer and answer as many questions as possible to maximize your score, even if it means just guessing on hard questions or when time is running out. Make sure to use general test-taking strategies like crossing out clearly wrong answers and using hints from the question and answer choices. Also, don't forget to explore the other videos on this channel as they provide detailed examples and step-by-step -step guides to help you tackle different question types with confidence. Okay, back to the Praxis Middle School Math Exam. You are never allowed to bring in your own calculator to a Praxis exam. However, ETS provides an on-screen calculator for some of their exams. Good news, Praxis Middle School Math is one of those. You'll have an on-screen graphing calculator that you'll have access to throughout the exam. This calculator offers a bunch of features. My next strategy tip relates to this. Practice using the calculator before test day. There's a free tutorial version on the ETS website so you can get familiar with it and not fumble with the tool during the exam. 
I provided a direct link down in the description. A few more calculator-specific tips. First, use the memory function to save results for multi-step calculations. Next, avoid rounding intermediate calculations until the final step to ensure the accuracy of your answer. And finally, double-check mode settings like degree versus radian before solving the problem. Another common question I get for the test is around formulas. The Praxis Middle School Math exam does provide you with a basic notation and formula sheet that you may reference during the exam. However, I always encourage test takers not to depend on this sheet. It may not be inclusive of every formula that you will need, and you do not want your first experience with using a specific formula to be on test day. I'm going to show you some common formulas on screen that you should make sure that you are comfortable with. Feel free to pause to jot them down, and please take time to practice solving problems with these formulas so that you're confident using them on test day. Now, I have some really important information on scrap paper. This is an important resource on test day and can help you work through problems and keep your calculations straight. But you need to follow ETS's rules. If you're taking your test in person at a testing center, make sure you request scrap paper from your proctor and don't attempt to bring in your own. You also need to return the scrap paper to the proctor at the end of the test. If the proctor sees you taking your own paper out of your pocket or doesn't think you've returned all the scrap paper at the end, you may get accused of cheating and your score will be invalidated. If you're taking the test at home on your own computer, you cannot take notes on regular paper and you'll be asked to erase all notes in view of the proctor at the end of the test. To take notes at home, ETS recommends that you use a small dry erase board with a marker. You won't be allowed to start the test if you try to use a regular sheet of paper. All right, now let's dive a little deeper into the content that you'll see on test day. Practice middle school math exam is divided into five main categories, each with roughly the same number of questions with the same scoring weight. The first section is numbers and operations. This section tests your skills with real numbers, fractions, decimals, percents, and ratios. You'll need to understand number properties, work with exponents, and solve problems using scientific notation and proportional relationships. One call out here. Since number sense is key for middle school students, some questions will ask you to analyze how they approach math and explain concepts clearly. If you have questions here, make sure to check out our practice problems video specifically on numbers and operations. The second category is algebra. This part is all about creating, evaluating, and working with algebraic expressions, equations, and inequalities. You'll solve linear and quadratic equations, work with polynomials, and apply exponent rules. Expect to interpret algebra in real-world situations and use different solving methods like graphs, algebraic manipulation, and substitution. Some questions may show student work, asking you to determine if a solution is correct or identify any misconceptions. The next section is functions. Here you'll work with functions, recognizing, defining, and evaluating them while determining domain and range. Be prepared to analyze key features of linear, quadratic, and exponential functions and compare how they're represented in tables, graphs, and equations. A big focus is using functions to model real-world situations and explain these relationships in a way that helps students build a strong understanding. If you have questions here, make sure to check out our practice problem videos specifically on functions. The fourth category is geometry and measurement. You'll see everything from lines and angles to triangles, quadrilaterals, and circles. Expect to work with transformations, congruence, similarity, and the Pythagorean theorem. Plus, calculate surface area and volume for different shapes. Since spatial reasoning can be tricky for middle schoolers, some questions will ask you to analyze student thinking and choose the best teaching strategies to help them grasp geometric concepts. If you have questions here, make sure to check out our practice problem video specifically on geometry and measurement. The final section is statistics and probability. You'll be working with things like data interpretation, probability, and understanding averages and variability. Be ready to analyze different kinds of graphs, bar graphs, histograms, and so on. You'll also need to calculate probabilities and interpret statistical data. Finally, you should expect to see some questions that focus on how students understand statistical information or how you would introduce probability concepts in a classroom setting. If you have questions here, make sure to check out our practice problem videos specifically on statistics and probability. Okay, I know this is a lot, but stick with me just a little longer. Let's talk about preparing for the practice middle school math exam. It's going to require a target approach, which brings me to my final strategy tip. Take a full-length practice test early in your prep. This identifies your strengths and pinpoints areas you need to work on. Think of it as your roadmap for focused studying. Here's a bonus tip. 
If a full-length test feels too daunting, consider checking out Study.com's diagnostic quizzes. Study.com has customized quizzes for each Praxis test code to analyze your performance and create a personalized study plan. This helps you focus your efforts while it'll have the biggest impact. Finally, regardless of how or where you're practicing, try to practice like it's the real test. Stick to your time limits and limit yourself to the resources that you'll have available on test day. Remember, preparation isn't just about learning the content. It's also about mastering test-taking strategies and building the confidence to succeed on test day. And that's it, your ultimate guide to conquering the Praxis Middle School Math Exam. For more detailed practice, strategies, and walkthroughs, check out our Praxis Middle School Math playlist here on YouTube, and then make your way over to study.com and check out one of our Praxis Test Prep courses. Our users boast a 92% pass rate, and our courses include full-length exams, hundreds of practice questions, and additional video lessons specifically tailored to the latest test updates. With our resources, you'll know exactly what to expect on test day. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more updates on Praxis exams and leave your questions and success stories in the comments below. Remember, we're rooting for you every step of the way. You've got this.